Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna from Hasna's Not Me and today I am discussing the liver. If you haven't watched the previous video where I discussed the anatomical structure of the liver, I think you should go ahead and watch that before you come into this video. In this video we're talking about the peritoneal relations and the visceral relations of the liver and uh, to all those who haven't subscribed, I make anatomy a piece of cake. So guys, click that subscribe button and let's get right into it. Let's begin with the peritoneal reflections of the liver. So what happens is your liver is an intraperitoneal organ and we all know it developed within the ventral mesogastrium. In front of the liver lied your anterior part of the ventral mesogastrium which developed into these ligaments and behind the liver was the lesser omentum. And we all know that the lesser omentum is attached to the margins of the sporta hepatis along with the fissure of the ligamentum venosum to the margins of that. So an L-shaped form of attachment of your lesser omentum is on the backside or inferior surface of the liver, right? So what happens is basically your liver, although it is an intraperitoneal organ, there are some parts parts of the liver that are devoid of attachment of peritoneum or they are outside or they do not carry any peritoneum. And the first important part that has no peritoneal attachment, which is free of peritoneum, is known as the bare area of the liver. And this right here on the posterior surface of the right lobe, you can see this is the bare area of the liver devoid of any peritoneal attachment it lies directly in contact with your diaphragm. Uh, this uh, bare area of the liver bears this peritoneal reflection all over. You can see right here. This peritoneal reflection is from the diaphragm. This is known as the, the, the superior coronary ligament and the inferior coronary ligaments, all right? These two ligaments are limiting this triangular bare area. The superior and inferior layers of the coronary ligaments on the right side, they join to form the right triangular ligament. And these go ahead and bind on the left side to form the left triangular ligament, all right? As you can see, the superior upper layer of the uh, coronary ligament blends anteriorly with your right layer of the falciform ligament. If you can see here, we remember the falciform ligament was in the anterior surface, right? Moreover, the inferior layer gets continuous with the lesser omentum attachment. And we know that the lesser omentum is on the margin of this porta hepatis. You can see right here. You can see this is the portal vein, right? So this is the triangular bare area. And this is also some part of that bare area, this left triangular area. Another part which uh, is devoid of peritoneal attachment is this groove for the inferior vena cava. The groove for the inferior vena cava is actually pierced by hepatic veins, the floor of it, right? And these hepatic veins directly enter into the inferior vena cava. We'll talk about that in the blood supply even more. And then we have another part that is devoid of peritoneal attachment and this is the fossa for the gallbladder. So if you remove the gallbladder beneath this uh, gallbladder, there is no peritoneal attachment. All right. Uh, and another important part is this falciform ligament lies in the anterior surface, right? So this is also a reflection. So you can see this little part over here is devoid of any peritoneal uh, attachment. And the falciform ligament is lying a little right to the median plane. Uh, and another point is the entire attachment of the lesser omentum. That area is also devoid of any peritoneal attachment. And we all know that the lesser omentum is attached to the margins of the porta hepatis and the fissure for the ligamentum venosum. Now let's talk about the visceral relations. Uh, in the anterior and superior surface, the visceral relation is mostly the xiphoid process, the diaphragm, and uh, these are basically separating your entire surface from lungs and the pleura. Superiorly, in the middle of the uh, superior surface will be a concavity for, for the cardiac impression. We all know that the heart is coming over here, all right? And on either side, these domes are for the diaphragm. Uh, apart from that, uh, on the right surface of the liver, there is the seventh to 11th rib impression. Let's go to the posterior surface now. Uh, in the posterior surface, the, there is impression for the inferior vena cava. To the right of the inferior vena cava, uh, you will see on the lower part, on the posterior surface of the right lobe, in this lower part of the groove of the inferior vena cava, you will see this impression. This is the right suprarenal gland impression, right? And just below it, on the inferior surface, this will be the kidney impression, all right? This entire impression is for the kidney. All right. Moreover, going even below, just to the right of the fossa for the gallbladder, right here will lie your right flexure of the colon. Why right? Because this is the right lobe, rightmost part of the liver. So over here, the colon will be coming. Uh, more specifically, it's the right flexure of the, the, that colic. So this is the colic impression. 
uh, this is the quadrate lobe. Now what happens on this side is that your esophagus comes because it's the left side, right? So esophagus comes, here comes the stomach and here comes the duodenum. So this is what's happening over here, right? So on the posterior surface of the left lobe, you'll see the esophageal impression. On the inferior surface of the left lobe, you'll see this um, very large gastric impression and gastric impression will continue on to the quadrate lobe as the uh, pylorus impression. And if the stomach is empty, then the pylorus will move back and rather this will become an impression for the first part of the duodenum and for the transverse colon. All right, so these were the necessary peritoneal uh, reflections and the uh, visceral relations. Apart from this, let me just uh, tell you about two sagittal fissures in the liver on the posterior and inferior surfaces. All right, there is this left sagittal fissure and a right sagittal fissure. All right, these are lying on your posterior surface and inferior surface of the liver. So the left sagittal fissure is continuing as is going to pass from this groove of ligamentum venosum and below it will pass groove of ligamentum teres. So this entire area you will call it the left sagittal fissure. The right sagittal fissure will be this from the groove of inferior vena cava in continuity to the fossa of the gallbladder. This will be the right sagittal fissure. So uh, make sure you remember this and in the next video let's talk about the blood supply and some a functional segmentation of the liver. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.